And now, for the concluding segment of this filmatic visit to the House of the Temple, it is my sincere pleasure and honor to present to you the distinguished and illustrious Henry C. Clausen, 33rd degree, Sovereign Grand Commander, the Supreme Council, 33rd degree, ancient and accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Brother Clausen. Sometimes it's asked, what is the uh, mission of the Scottish Rite? Well, the mission of the Scottish Rite is bifurcated. That is twofold. One part includes the goal of the symbolic lodge, the Mother Grand Lodge of the world, the Grand Lodge of England, the first three degrees of Freemasonry, that adopted Anderson's constitutions in 1723 and thus became non-sectarian. This departed from a spiritual to a societal base. It is usually defined as a regular system of morality, veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. The Scottish Rite of the Mother Jurisdiction, on the other hand, retained, reinforced, and expanded both goals, societal and spiritual. Hence, we pursue in daily living the virtues of morality, charity, and patriotism. But we also search for an ultimate mystic union with the deity, and for that purpose we reveal and apply in our degrees from the fourth to the thirty-third, the ancient wisdom, esoteric knowledge that comes to us over long, drifting centuries. Our Scottish Rite, therefore, delves deeply into philosophy and metaphysics, but we square this with the miracles of modern science. For example, in my book, emergence of the mystical, I correlate our Scottish Rite mission and modern science, and I show that they are compatible companions. Throughout all history, there have been examples of extraordinary purposes of the mind. These have included and been repeated in different forms, metaphors, that derive from what we know as wisdom of the ancients. The powers, forces, and energies can be discovered if we search deeply enough. They were to be found in all parts of the world, such as the mysteries of Isis and Osiris in Egypt, the Mithraic mysteries of the Persians, the Orphic and Bacchic and later Lelicinian mysteries of Greece, the mysteries of Samothrace and Chaldea, the mysteries of India, the Druidical mysteries, the Gothic and Scandinavian mysteries, and others. The object of these mysteries was not merely to teach morality. They developed the whole man and permitted him to attain his total potential. As Albert Pike said, had moral truths alone been taught the initiates, the mysteries could never have deserved and received the magnificent eulogies of the most enlightened men of antiquity, of Pindar, Plutarch, Isocrates, Diodorus, Plato, Euripides, Socrates, Aristophanes, Cicero, Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, and others. These were philosophers or historians devoted to the investigation of truth. All the sciences were taught there. In the uh, cities of the ancient world, there were temples for public worship in which philosophers and mystics taught groups what were known as the Lesser and Greater Mysteries. They imparted to their initiates the secret wisdom in sacred dramas, 
and communications to those admitted as keys to wisdom for the doctrine of the one God, the resurrection of the eternal life, the dignity of the human soul, and union with the deity as reflected in the splendor of the universe. They taught the tremendous possibilities of the power of the will and reawakened spiritual strength so initiates would think positively, use their faculties with confidence and intelligence, improve their mental endowments, develop their will to control events, attitudes, and health, understand the possibilities of intuition, hypnotism, and the subconscious, be patient 